When it comes to making plots, there are certain things we always want to do to turn a plot like this into a plot like this that we can put on a poster or in a paper. Instead of repeating those lines of code over and over, today we're going to look at setting RC params. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I wanted to make a plot of some air and soil temperature values. And as it turns out, I need to make this plot presentable. So I need to do some things like change label size and line width. The problem is, it's not the only plot I have to make this week. And instead of having many lines of repeated code over and over in all of my plots that when I decide to change my style, I have to go back and change every plot, or having a function that just has those lines of code in it, I decided I want to actually set some matplotlib rc params. And then for the rest of my notebook or my program, all of my plots will have that styling. So let's take a look. First things first, we need to get our data in. I'm going to import numpy as mp, import pandas as pd, and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Of course, with our mat plot lib inline magic so our notes show up in the or so our plot show up in the notebook. I'm going to use pandas to read my first CSV file here, which is this surface temperature file. And I'm going to say that we want to parse dates from the column called created at in this file. The actual contents of these files isn't too important. We're just getting some data in to illustrate the point, but we're going to do pandas best practices along the way, of course. So we see we've got some ID hash, a value, a feed ID, when the data are from, and it parsed, uh, the date time, and then some NANDs for lat, lon, and elevation. Now that's my surface temperature, my soil temperature, but I also have a file of ambient air temperature at the same time. So we're going to use the same read CSV incantation. And we're going to read our ambient temperature file. And we'll just go with that. I'm not going to worry about parsing the dates because they are the same dates and times, in fact. These are taken from the same instrument. They're just saved into two files. So then in my original data frame, I'm going to create a column called ambient temperature and assign it to the value column from df2. So now if we look at our original data frame, it's got ambient temperature, and we've got a lot of things that we don't need, so we're gonna drop some columns and rename the rest. So I'm gonna drop id, feed id, lat, lawn, and elevation. Those are our columns, so axis is one, and I'm going to do this in place so I don't have to reassign. Okay, our data frame looks, let's just use head there so we don't take up so much notebook space. Our data frame looks better now, uh, but created at and value still aren't the names I want. There are several ways you can rename columns. I'm going to use the rename method from pandas. Rename. The columns I want to rename are, we're going to pass it a dictionary, where the key is the old name, and then the value for that key is the new name. Soil temperature. And then created at, we're going to rename to simply time. And we're going to do that in place as well. And now if we look at the top of our data frame, that looks like something that we're ready to work with. So let's try to make a simple plot. I'm going to create a figure and an axis object. I'm 
and we'll make it a 12 by 6 plot. I'm going to plot DF time, DF ambient temperature using tab completion there to save myself typing. And we're going to label it as air for air temperature. We're going to do the same thing for the surface temperature or the soil temperature. And finally, we'll call plot.legend. Well, that gives us a plot, certainly, but it's not very pretty. We have a lot of extra chart junk, like these top and right spines that we don't need. The fonts are way too small. The ticks on the x-axis aren't particularly useful or formatted in a particularly nice way. And we've got this big spike in the data that we need to clean up. So we've got a little bit of work to do here to make this a presentable data plot. Now, it's true that I could go in and add a bunch of things in here about font sizes and tick sizes and line widths. Or we could set RC params and just have that for the whole notebook. This may not always be what you want to do, but I save a snippet of text and put it at the top of most of my notebooks so my plots have consistent styling and my plot code isn't horrendously long. So I'm going to go ahead and type in all my RC params and then we'll take a quick look at them. All right, so let's take a look at these. I'm setting my X and Y tick labels to be a 16 point font. The rest of the fonts in the plot to be 14. Making all my line widths 2 by default so they're a little more bold. We're setting sizes of major and minor ticks, both the size and the width, so that they're a little bit more pronounced. These are some very small ticks that are somewhat hard to see. Some like having the tick go into the plot as well as out of. My preference is not to have it cross the spine, but you can set that here if you'd like. And now all I'm going to do is copy and paste the same code that made this plot. And this is the result. This is already better. This is ready to go on a slide if you're in a hurry. We've got readable font sizes. We've got bolder lines that are easier to see. And it's not bad for just copying and pasting a snippet at the top of a notebook. But we can do better yet. First, I'm going to address this spike in the data. I don't like that, but I don't want to go dig through and find it. And sure, I could say anything less than 50 degrees is fine, but that's not what I really want to do either. Uh, so let's see how we can remove it in a more automated way and maybe clean up our signal a little bit. We're going to use the median filter. From scipy.signal, import medfilt. This is just a running median, great for despiking and just general making your data look a little prettier when you present it. Of course, if you're dealing with something where you care about the frequency content, beware. I'm going to wrap my Y values in medfilt here. I'm just going to do a three-point median filter. Nothing aggressive at all here. Just something to help make my data look a little nicer. All right, we're despiked. A couple of these little ripples are a little smoother. Not bad, but we can do still better. One thing we're missing, of course, is a label. So I'm going to set the Y label to be temperature deg C. And notice the font size, we don't have to set it because it's set in our RC params. We're saving ourselves lines of code or arguments that later we just have to go back and change in a bunch of places. We can turn off those top and right spines as they're not incredibly useful. So the top spine set visible is going to be false. The right spine set visible is false. And there we are. Okay, we're getting better yet. All right, 
Lastly, we're going to fix up our tick marks and grid. So up here, import matplotlib.dates as mdates. And let's set the major ticks to be days and the minor ticks to be, oh, let's say every two hours. All right. So first we need to create our locators, mdates.ourlocator. I'm going to use an A range 0 to 25, non-inclusive on the top end, to 2. Actually, we could set 24 there and with an interval of 2. Create our day formatter, day locator, and we want one every day. Our day formatter is going to be, oh, let's do a month and a day. And then our hour formatter is just going to be the hour. Our, actually, let's leave it empty. We don't have a lot of space in here, so we'll just make them minor ticks with no formatter. I think that'll look a little better. So if we run that, well, nothing happens because we haven't actually set the ticks yet, the locators. We've just made these instances of locators and formatters. So for our x-axis, set major locator to be days. Minor locator to be hours. We'll set our major formatter to be day format. And our minor formatter is going to be our format. Okay, so now if we run that, we have a major tick for every day and a minor tick for every two hours. Not too bad. The last thing that we're going to do is add some grid lines. And I want them for both major and minor because I want one every two hours. And there we go. So without adding too much to our plot code, we made every plot in this notebook look better by just using matplotlib RC params. And then by taking just a couple minutes to work with datetime formatters and locators that for some reason seem to scare a lot of folks, we've made an intelligent, intelligible, easily readable plot perfect for your next poster or presentation. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.